I'm curious to hear how you respond. So, which everyone comes to mind. You know, the first one is, how was your web text innovative in the historical and or material technological contexts within which it was created? Go. <laughs> oh, um, so let's see. I guess maybe I can, I can start with the collaborative one, um, the expanding the space of face-to-face one with um, Pete Vandenberg and Katie Wozniak. Um, I don't know how to think about it in terms of innovation. I think what was maybe unique about it at the time maybe may have more to do with it being a piece of writing center scholarship Mm -hmm. Um, just in terms of uh, at DePaul was doing some really um, cool innovative innovative stuff with um, audiovisual conferencing um, because um, DePaul has two main campuses in Chicago and they're both a few miles apart but then there are also several satellite campuses Mm -hmm. so um I started there as a master's student and pretty much right when I started there, um, they were just beginning to pilot these programs because we had writing centers on the two main campuses, but not in any of the, in any of the suburban right. campuses. So um, we had to figure out a way to be able to serve students who wanted to work with the writing center, but weren't about to make the however long commute down into Lincoln Park or the Loop. Um, So we set up webcams in some of the libraries um, at those campuses and tried piloting a program. And um, then I guess it was my second year in the program. That's when we actually started working on more of the scholarly side Uh of, of things and trying to record those conversations. So actually what we just went through trying to record this conversation, it was right. like that. Yeah. Only <laughs> six years ago must've been what's worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was because like, not only was it difficult to find a program to conduct the tutorials in at the time, because we're, when I started at DePaul, it was 2005, and by the time we were actually trying to do this on a larger scale and, and study it, it was oh, 2006. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, Skype existed, but it wasn't great, um, and we didn't really have, you know, it wasn't an option for us to use, like, the paid propi- proprietary kind of right. tutoring systems yeah. that, like, Adobe had at the right. time, or... Um, I think macromedia. Um, (laughs) Right. Remember them. Yeah. (laughs) There, there weren't terribly many options. Um, We ended up using a program. I'm not even sure if it exists anymore called site speed um, because at the time anyway, that allowed us to to do um, remote desktop Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So if um, we were talking with a writer and they wanted to actually show us the word document or show us something physically that they were doing and not hold it up to the camera, but something that looked on their screen. Yeah. <laughs> they were able to do that. Um, so there was that for us. And also it was a free program. Um, so it was just so much trial and error. And um, so I feel like that whole aspect is just sort of <laughs> wealth in and of itself in terms of what we had to do. And um the other issue that we had was was the screen recording, and we ended up using Camtasia mm-hmm. um, for that. Yeah. And um, at first, it was just using the trial version, but then we were able to locate the funding to to have um, stuff on on computers at both the writing centers, but also in the suburban campus right. library. Um, so we ended up recording a number of sessions, and um, it was hard to find participants just because, like. I think it's it's a challenge to do that kind of it, it felt so new to people yeah. at the time um it feels weird saying that but it did feel very very new for for students and yeah. especially people who worked at the writing center to be doing that and then recording it as another right. layer was a whole issue um unto itself but um yeah when I looked I looked at the web text this morning and I don't know if it's my browser but like the the, the video embeds aren't working um, so it could be my browser. It could just be the way that we embedded the QuickTime videos. The time no longer works. So even that's kind of funny to me that yeah. it's broken yeah. <laughs> a, yeah. a little bit now. Um, but what was really, I think, useful about that um, for just in terms of writing center studies was thinking about all of the issues that go into trying to create this kind of tutorial system. And it just brought up multiple access issues because 
Um, yeah. You know, it creates, in some ways, having these systems creates accessibility because, like, I mean, for us anyway, it was totally unrealistic to expect students to travel two hours to come into the writing center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we really needed that particular system. But then, you know, it's also hard to get people to use that particular system. And um, even thinking about all the things that can go wrong with technology, but also then thinking about modality, disability, yeah. like there are so many different things. So we sort of ended that project by saying like, here's what we did, but we're not necessarily recommending it. Like we can't give um, wholesale recommendations. Right. It's more like we can talk through the process and it's something that, you know, the optimism surrounding these kinds of tutoring technologies really needs to be checked. Um, because I think, I mean, for me, because I was such a young graduate student at the time, like I was, I, I had this sort of unbridled technological optimism going on, like, yes, shiny cameras. And then by the end of it, it was like, no, yeah, no yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. I never want to see a camera again. Well, um, how did you make the decision when you all decided that you wanted to publish about what you had done to do it in the way that you did so that it ended up as a web text? I mean, I'm assuming it was more than just, hey, we can show some of the video, um, yeah. although that I'm, was probably part of it. But Yeah, that, that was part of it, but I, I think you're right. The Here's the video was a very tiny part of it. Um, and I think it happened over several conversations because it, it started out, you know, in the sense that um, Katie Wozniak and I were graduate assistants at DePaul, and so we wanted to, you know, we were doing this as part of our employment, but also as part of... Um, an independent study we were mm -hmm. taking with Pete. And um, at least for me, I had started the master's program at DePaul, unsure of what I wanted to do afterward. Um, at the time when I started, I was thinking of it as a stepping stone to an MFA program. I, I wanted to do creative writing. Uh -huh. And by my second year, I was really, I had transitioned into being a rhetoric and composition program and, and for me like and yeah. I knew that I wanted to pursue a PhD so I think I had my own progression along those lines and I think something similar was happening for Katie where eventually um, like we we both kind of had some shifts just in terms of thinking what we would do as a the appeal of rhetoric and composition to me was the digital aspect to it um, in part because as an undergrad, I started out as a computer science major, mm -hmm. and I dropped um, my second year just because um, the program I, I was in, it was just, it was so male-dominated. <laughs> I've not never heard that all. before from anybody, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I just, I, I was one of maybe like five women yeah. in the program, like it was just, um, it, it didn't feel like a, a disciplinary home to me. And so like in some ways I think Brett comp, like it was like it provided an avenue for me to return to things that I really had loved, but had set aside because I just couldn't, couldn't deal with that yeah. particular program. So, um, you know, I, I think for us, it gave us an opportunity to really think through the field. Um, but also I, I think that, at least for me, it's just the way I think on some level. Like, um, I think there were certain affordances to having this structured as a web text beyond the video that might not have happened on the page. So there's a certain visuality to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were really thinking long and hard about sort of the visual me metaphor, the interface for it, and we used Flash for that cover right. page. And we actually, Katie and I, walked over to the dorms talked to a couple of first year students who said, yeah, you can photograph our dorm room. So that's what we did. We just, these okay, yeah, I was wondering. Just met, we're photographing their dorm and, and that ended up being um, the cover image. And um, for us, like, I think space was a really huge component of that particular study. Um, and especially because of the tutorials we had recorded and conducted, there were always these moments where, you know, sometimes you would become really engrossed in the conversation and you would um, forget that you were having a brutally evident that this yeah, is what yeah. was happening. So like someone's doorbell would ring um, or they would get up and walk away and bring back a bag of Cheetos or something. <laughs> so there was something really domestic about it. Um, and it was very different from a regular tutorial. Um, so that's a long-winded answer, but... Um, no, I'm, it makes me curious, though, because I've been thinking about, as I've been reflecting on my piece and realizing that it's, you know, like 12, 13 years ago, 
Um, and thinking about affordances of then. And one of the things that struck out for me in that piece, and you just talked about, is how um, in these writing center conferences that they were talking with other people online. And yet the piece itself you know, talks about that, but doesn't feel very domestic and um, doesn't feel that way, you know? So there's still a lot of the academic arrangement to your piece. There's that opening picture that you've talked about of the dorm room, and that sets up a really nice tone, but that's not carried through the rest of it. And I'm assuming that has to do with crap, you know? There's not much we can do with this, given constraints on time and sound and, and stuff. So it makes me wonder, you know, if you were to redo that piece now, given what you know and given what you can do, if you would try to change the arranger to redesign it generally, if you were to do it now, given what's possible. I think I, think I would do it very differently now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, some of it has to do, I think, with thinking through the visual metaphor, the way people would engage with the text, but also some of it is more pragmatic issues. Like I think I've I've come to somewhat despise the pop-up design uh -huh. where you click on something and then it's a page pop-up. Right. And at the time I think that was kind of the rage, like it was the cool hip thing to do. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um so so I think I think there's that. Um there's also the element of user control that I think isn't as much there in terms of, you know, what happens when you resize a page, not good. Right. Um, right. With that current 